Hi, I'm back. Uh, people want to know where I was, and uh, perhaps, well, you probably can't tell. I'm less swollen now than I was, but I had all four wisdom teeth pulled and major complications. So let us start with the fact that I walked into the surgeon's room, sat down in the chair, saw my x-ray, and my surgeon said, be right back. In came a new surgeon and said, I have the most experience here. I'll be handling this surgery. Warning, warning, red flag. Apparently, I had two bottom bone shelf impact wisdom teeth. And if anyone knows what that is, it means that the tooth grows upward um, against all the other teeth. But there's a piece of bone on top of this one. So they have to cut the bone away, then pull the tooth out. Both of the bottom ones were bone shelf impacted. They were sitting on my nerve, which meant that I could lose all the feeling in here if they went through with the surgery. So me thinking, hey, I want to keep the feeling in my mouth. Let's not do the surgery. Um, no, apparently they were both infected and I had a cyst behind one of them and had to have a biopsy. So regardless, the teeth had to come out. So those two had to come out, cyst, biopsy, bone shelf impacted, sitting on the nerve. And if that wasn't enough, the top two, they were broken through the gums, so I thought, hell, it's just, you know, one, two, three, tug, and you're done. No, 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 no. Those were impacted as well. The fact that they had broken the skin at all meant nothing. Those two were soft tissue impacted, uh, and this one, the roots, were wrapped around the nerve. So I, of course, sobbing, signing all the sheets, um, put me to sleep. I understand the risks, get it over and done with, because it has to get done. Um, they hook me up, give me the sleeping gas, much more calm, I stop crying, then he goes in. And I'm like, I'm still awake. I am woozy, but I'm still awake. And he informs me that because of the infection, they're um, not to be gross, hope nobody's eating, but there's pus. So if I inhaled that uh, into my lungs, I could die. So he couldn't put me to sleep. So he cut my gums open, broke the teeth one at a time, and when it got to this one where the roots were wrapped around, I was trying to hit him, and they had me tied down, so um, I didn't get to, but I really wanted to. Uh, anyway, he finally said, after he broke all of them, I can put you to sleep now, and he just reached over, and I already had the IV in, and he just hit the, um, hit the shot or whatever, and I got it, and I knocked out, and I woke up. And it's weird, I totally felt like I was awake for the whole thing. I didn't until I realized he had stitched me up and I was definitely not awake for that. It was strange, but... So, I'm still kind of out of it. I had four days in bed. Um, oh, when I was leaving, he came out and said, of the 25 years experience I have, you're in my top five. And as I'm leaving, my mom said, can you give her, like, some painkillers, a couple? Like, can you give her something now? And he said, I already called it in to your pharmacy. You have a bottle of Vicodin waiting for you. Take it as soon as you get it, and don't stop. Well, let's just say that by the time I drove to the pharmacy, waited to pick it up, picked it up, got home, had to get something in my stomach, um, but that would require swallowing, so I had to wait for the bleeding to stop so I could open my mouth enough to fit in a little spoon and swallow yogurt. Um, the, uh, the pain, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the numb stuff, whatever, it had worn off. So for an hour and a half between the time that it wore off to the time that the Vicodin kicked in, but ever since that I was okay. I took Vicodin. I didn't feel like I was drugged up, but I felt very friendly. <laughs> I was like, let's watch a movie. Everyone come sit with me and watch a movie. I watched like 12 movies. I watched from The Born Identity to Little Miss Sunshine, um, Curious George. I really can't even list them all. I, list, I, I watched at least 10 movies. 
I just sat on, I lived on the couch, and I had, my face was bright red, I had ice packs on it the whole time, even when I went to bed, it was hard to sleep, because I had cold cheeks, because I kept the ice packs as I'm trying to sleep, because I didn't want the swelling, you can, it's still swollen, maybe you could see some of the bruise, there's not much at all, nothing to show off, um, which is good, anyway, um, I'm back, and I'm tired, I'm not myself yet. I don't feel very good. I'm decent. It hurts when I say things that start with an S or a W because my jaw moves slightly to the side from my accent, and that hurts. And I still can't really eat anything solid. I tried beef stew. Everything in the stew was mushy. It was fine, but the beef, I had to chew, and I think I popped a stitch in the back. That kind of hurt. I'm stitched up on the bottom, but I have holes on the top. So I'm paranoid that things are going to get stuck in there, and I really don't want a dry socket, because I've heard really bad things like that. When I said dry socket, my mouth went to the set. Anyway, I'm eating a lot of, like, yogurt all the time, and frozen yogurt, and rice pudding. My dad bought me a cheesecake. I ate almost a whole thing. It's a little one. It's like that big. Yeah. I ate at least half of it in two days, <laughs> and I can't think of anything else. I can't even suggest, uh, oh, miso soup. I had five miso soups. I had one for, like, lunch and dinner, lunch and dinner, breakfast, like breakfast one time because I couldn't eat anything else. So I was just so afraid that I was going to feel that pain I felt the first day that every four or five hours I was, like, bike it in like it in, even if I didn't feel pain, because I was petrified that I was going to feel as much pain as I felt when it, when I didn't yet have the Vicodin in. But then afterwards, people were telling me, oh, good thing you had a good reaction to Vicodin. I didn't know you could have a bad reaction to Vicodin. Oh, people, like, violently throwing up. Could you imagine not being able to open your mouth, being in excruciating pain, and violently throwing up? I, if someone had told me that before, I would have tried to not have the Vicodin, but that would have been excruciating. So I had it done Friday, so I was, Friday I was in a lot of pain, Saturday I was in a, a decent amount of pain, Sunday I was in discomfort, most of Monday I was just in achy discomfort, and today, um, a little bit when I swallow, and the jaw shifting thing. And I have, um, TMD, which is uh, like TMJ, it's, it's a jaw disorder, where when you open your mouth, I can't now, but when you open your mouth all the way down, it clicks and you hear it and feel it. Um, TMJ is when it sticks like that and you have to have surgery to have it put back. Um, TMD is it clicks every time and because of that, my jaw shifts. That's why it shifts. Anyway, people are asking about me, so, hi, I'm okay now. I can't really smile, but that's about it. I can't open my mouth more than that. Uh, that's it. So I can't even look in the mirror to see what it feels like, see what it looks like. But I can feel it. Like I could touch it, but I don't really want to touch it. Anyway, I'm totally rambling because I don't feel good. But uh, if you made it this far, thanks. And um, hopefully I'll have something worth watching soon.